first lectionary reading will be taken from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 29. You have not come to something that cannot that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a vo voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I'll tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, that heavenly Je Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that of what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. The word of God for the people of God. Let us stand as we read the Apostles' Creed together, number 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sing number 110, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
That was a sermon in a hymn. What a great message in that song. I told Ron I didn't think I knew it, and he said, oh, you do. It was my first time. That was a good one. I liked it. I think Dave, did David say it was Luther's song? Or? Luther's song. Oh, wow. Maybe that, was, that was excellent. Yes, it was. All right, our second lectionary reading is from the New Testament, uh, the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Uh, speaking of Jesus. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. It's good to be in God's house today. This morning for announcements, our Wednesday night Bible study is at 6 o'clock with Pizza and Fellowship at 5.30. Come and be with us. Any other announcements? Uh, if you need to get the stats, uh, ask Paul because I wouldn't be able to print the bulletin today. We had printer issues, so we don't have a printed bulletin. We have a written one. Someone writes fairly well. Yeah, that was Stella. <laughs> Do what? This Wednesday, the mission truck is supposed to be here to collect stuff. For prayer requests this morning, uh, my friend Argel Kendrick is still undergoing cancer treatments. Uh, he's very ill right now with side effects, and she's having taken to the hospital this morning for some fluids. So remember him and Tina as she takes care of him. Let's continue to remember our flood victims, those who've lost loved ones this week, all those suffering with cancer and their caregivers, June Sloan. Continue to remember Sarah, Chaffins, and Beth's dad and family. We do have a praise report this morning. Cooper Coleman, that has suffered for several years with cancer, got to start school this week. He went to school the first day Thursday, and that was such a blessing. And the videos, you couldn't keep from crying because when he came out of the hospital that, or came out of surgery for the first surgery, they didn't think he was going to make it. But God is still a miracle worker, and Cooper got to go back to school. Any other prayer requests? Remember Tim as he goes back to the doctor in Lexington. Any other spoken requests? King David, uh, David Staten uh, asked us to pray for him. He's got to have another knee replacement. David Staten, we need to remember him as he has a knee replacement. Michelle, John DeDameron, teacher, I keep one version of my John DeDameron has breast cancer, and let's put her on our prayer, re prayer list. Sorry. If nothing else, we ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. So uh, we want to continue to remember uh, people that are battling COVID. Uh, I had it a couple weeks ago. And the good news is uh, while it's highly contagious, not as many people are ended up in the hospital. And I think uh, the last time I checked, there was like 13 or something and maybe three in the ICU. Uh, and uh, so, while it's still very contagious, it's not as potent. It, uh, most people have some mild and some flu-like symptoms. And of course, if you have underlying health issues, that, that can cause it more problems. So uh, some people we know right now that have that, uh, just pray for them. I remember, it, a young guy to Okay. Any unspoken requests? We'll lift your hand. God sees your hand and knows the need that it represents. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. 
Dear Lord, as we come before you today, we thank you, Lord, that you are a constant in our lives in a lot in a world that is not. And God, that we can come here and worship you, knowing God that you hear our prayer, that we can uh, also, Lord, trust you, turn to you in times of distress. And we want to pray for everyone today and ask you to bless them and help them. And uh, God, these prayer requests, they lift, we lift them up to you. We ask you, God, as we have many times, to hear our prayers, and we know you do, and answer them according to your will. And Lord, we know that sometimes in our troubles and trials, there are things that you can teach us. There are lessons that we can learn and we can grow stronger or we can grow uh, more bitter. And really that's up to us. And so I pray for these requests and I pray for our church, the Church Universal, the Methodist Church. We pray God for our leaders today. And God help us and guide us in the way you'd have us go. Forgive us of our sins and lead us in the way you'd have us go. And we pray, Lord, as you taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so uh, our, uh, as I mentioned for the stewardship report is not in the bulletin but you can get with Paul and get that we'll try to have that maybe next time uh, we're going to sing our doxology are you going to play the uh, if you'd like and able to let's stand and sing our doxology today and then uh, Michelle's going to come and you may be seated and bless us with a song. This week on Friday, I celebrated 20 years of working at Community Trust Bank. Uh, when I walked in 20 years ago, I knew nothing about banking. I could keep your books and make sure you had money in the bank, but I didn't know nothing about the banking business. And it's kind of opposite of bookkeeping and CPA work. But I'm thankful because I went through a very hard time before I got the job at the bank. I'd lost my job at another place and struggled financially, but God blessed me with a good job, a wonderful group of people to work with, friendships that well, I'll have for the rest of my life. And I don't think I'll be there 20 more years, but I'm thankful that God blessed me. And this song's about our blessings.
our scripture text taken from the 71st Psalm beginning with the first verse entitled a prayer for lifelong protection and help in you O Lord I take refuge let me never be put to shame in your righteousness deliver me and rescue me incline your ear to me and save me be to me a rock of refuge a strong fortress to save me for you are my rock and my fortress rescue me O my God from the hand of the wicked from the grasp of the unjust and cruel for you O Lord are my hope my trust O Lord from my youth upon you I have leaned from my birth it was you who took me from my mother's womb my praise is continually of you let's pray father we pray that we might be a rock in this community that we might be a, a, a fortress of your faith a demonstration of it in the community for it's in christ's name we pray amen i'd like to begin this morning by uh with a quote really from uh a book called uh, Windows of Heaven. It's a novel and uh, it's a fictional character named Harley Camden. It says a Methodist pastor named Harley Camden took an evening walk along the bank of the Occoquan River. The sun had set but there was still enough light to illuminate the charcoal gray outcroppings of rock that rose up from the edge of the river. Harley knew that these Virginia rocks were old, formed about 300 million years ago. Harley's life was in chaos, and he needed to find stability. Putting his hands on a rock by the roadside, he began to make a connection with something much bigger than himself. Sitting down on the rock, he had this strange sensation that this, his center of gravity was moving down, 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 deep in the stone beneath him. What he wondered, had this massive rock witnessed as it looked over the town of Aquacan? Native Americans and settlers, revolutionary soldiers and redcoats, slave owners and abolitionists, blacks and whites, Jews and Christians and Muslims. The rocks had seen it all. Standing silently above the fading light on the Aquacan River, Pulling out his smartphone, Harley called up the scripture in Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Harley read it, and then he repeated it. Get outside of your head, he thought to himself. Let your rest, yourself rest in the Lord of the rock. This is what is real. He realized, a fortress that can stand against anything. Lean on this, he said, the rock on which you can take refuge. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. And although this is a, a fictional character in the novel, Windows of Heaven, his need for stability is something very, very real something that we can all identify with. Over the past few years, uh, it's been chaotic and hectic uh, for all of us, really. There's been a lot of uh, chaos, if you would, in our world. We think about, you know, the pandemic and, and how that affected our lives and, and how uh, Businesses closed. Some people lost their jobs. Some businesses closed permanently. There were schools affected, homes affected, churches. Some churches still have not recovered from this. I was talking to a pastor yesterday from uh, another state, and he said while their church was still going okay, many of the churches in their area, which were very small, much smaller churches, never recovered from from that and they closed since which kind of helped their church grow because they stayed open but uh, that was one of the unfortunate things of of all of this 
But the writer says that God is a rock and a fortress. And the writer of 71 needs to be rescued from something. Uh, from what I understand, this, the writer is probably very old now in his older years. And uh, he's got some things he, he feels like it, by this time he should not be having these kind of problems. And yet he's got enemies coming against him and, and uh, all these troubles. And many of the people that are his enemies say, well, your God has abandoned you now. And he, re he writes this psalm to say that he has confidence in God, that God has not abandoned him. And he shows that in verses 1 through 8, his confidence in God is stated very clearly. And then 9 through 13, his confidence in God is practiced in prayer. Prayer is one of the ways that we, we show our confidence and gain our confidence. And 14 through 24, his confidence in God is vindicated. When life seems out of control, where do you turn? When life seems like, when it seems like everything is just out of control, where do we turn to? Who do we turn to? And, uh, you know, while the answer seems obvious, the truth is many of us don't really turn to God like we should. Where do we find stability? in this world. I've shared with you uh, a couple of years ago when Sandy and I were hiking on Mount Rogers <clears throat> and uh, we were in the Virginia mountains, one of the highest peaks, and we hiked to, as we were hiking up. Uh, and this was in uh, uh, November. And, you know, there was no snow on the ground. The weather seemed perfectly fine. But as we reached that higher elevation, we run into a uh, really an ice storm. And we were halfway up the mountain, and, uh, and it was very, very cold and bitter, and this really like a blizzard came at us. And we found this big rock, uh, and uh, we got underneath. It was kind of hanging over, and we got under that rock, and we had our lunch, and we took a respite there under that rock and uh, found some shelter in the time of storm. And, you know, the writer is kind of comparing God to, to a rock, really. Uh, if you think about it. And he's talking about a rock that has some stability in a world that doesn't seem very stable. So where do we turn to? Where do we put our trust? And, and you will find that people put their trust in all kinds of things. For example, do we trust in science? And while I'm thankful for science and the technology and the advancements in science has just been tremendous. And, and I certainly don't want to undermine scientific breakthroughs and discoveries. But we all know that it, science has its limitations, right? We, we learned that during the, uh, the pandemic with the CDC. Uh, even now, they're coming out and admitting that they made some mistakes. And, uh, you know, C, the CDC has some of the top scientists in the world. And uh, many people follow their guidance. And, and you know, it changes from week to week. Uh, but we tried to uh, we tried to follow it as best we could, and and uh, you know we got different uh, sometimes different messages, mixed messages. And uh, but what we find that that while science is great, uh, science science is not always right. We can go back in history and see uh, where you know science got it wrong, and sometimes the church got it wrong. But uh, we understand that. We need, uh, you know, on the other hand, uh, I see a lot of people who, who uh, unwisely made decisions not to follow any of the science of the CDC or the guidance. And, and we had people would come into the hospital and re simply refuse to get vaccinated and refuse to do treatments if they had uh, infusions and all those. And they simply refused because they had heard, uh, you know, some conspiracy theory and some of them died as a result. And so, you know, that's, that's going the other a uh, little too far. And so while we need science, and science is helpful, uh, you know, for things like, uh, you know, if we look back on history, we see, you know, they were able to get rid of a lot of diseases through scientific breakthroughs. And we, we certainly don't want to underestimate that and, and undermine it in any way. But at the same time, we really can't put our trust 
in science because it's constantly changing and they're updating uh, things that I was taught in school today they don't necessarily believe that you know they're, they, they've come up with different theories you know even things about you know how the dinosaurs ended or how the world came into being things those are constantly changing and and, and so I'm not saying uh, don't don't listen to science I, I, don't get me wrong but what I'm saying is it's not a constant it really isn't it's not something you can put your trust in and say now this is what the science says and I'm going to believe it and that settles the matter no 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 that's not good you can't put your trust in science you can, you can rely on it and you can use it. And, and the Bible, I think, uh, uh, you know, John Wesley would say, use wisdom, scripture, uh, reason, tradition, all these things. Put all these things together when you're making a decision. Uh, don't be like one of those people who said, the Lord will take care of me, like the guy that was on the roof and, you know, the flood came. And just say, well, I don't, I don't need to take medicines. I don't need to take vaccine. I don't need to do this because the Lord will take care of me. Well, you know, God is taking care of you. I remember when... When the, the first time that we were able to do the vaccine, I thank God for the miracle and for the op opportunity to be able to do that. But what I'm saying today is you can't put your trust in those things. Not your faith. Not your full faith because they are not constants. You know, and, and then, you know, what about our jobs? You know, we, we, we have, we, we know that those are not assured either, those things. Money, uh, remember the rich fool who said, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to, I think I'll tear down my barns. I, I, I've got so much, I don't, I don't have enough room. I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger barns. And, and I'll just say, you know, man, you've, you've got it made. Just sit, eat, drink, and be merry. And, you know, you, you're fine. And, and God said, thou fool, this night thy show, so shall be required of you. And then who shall these things be? We can't trust in any of these things because they are not foolproof. They are not uh, certain and all these things. Even our friends. You may trust in your friends. I, I've got some pretty good friends, but, but even our friends will let us down. Family can let us down from time to time and all these things. There's only one person that I know, that I know for certain, that will not let you down. And that is Christ. Christ is a rock that will never, ever let you down. And it is a constant. I'm so thankful today that in all the world, and all these things keep changing, and the science keeps changing, and the, the news changes from day to day, and people change, and the world changes, but God never does. God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And God is like a rock that is, that is constant and doesn't change. And I, somebody said, I may tremble on the rock, but the rock never trembles under me. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I don't know what you're trusting in today, but if it's not the rock of Christ, you may be disappointed someday. And so I, I encourage you today, as Jesus said, the wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. You all know the song. And the rains came and the house fell, and great was the fall of it, but the house built on the rock stood firm, because it had a foundation that was sure. And so what is your foundation today? It doesn't matter how great you build a house, and how beautiful you may build it, and how wonderful it may be, if the foundation isn't secure, then it's not going to stand. And the writer says here, I'm trusting in the rock. O oh Lord, I put my trust in you. Never let me be put to shame. You will never be put to shame. I would, I've never put my trust in Christ and ever been disappointed. But I have been disappointed in other people. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong <coughs> refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. We sing that song, our God is an awesome God, and he is. But in this passage, God is much more than just that. When life seems out of control, God is solid. He's constant. God never changes. Even older than the Aquacan rocks, 
that we talked about. God travels across time, space to enter our, our 21st century and just be a firm foundation in an ever constant and ever changing world. There's a mineral called garnet. There's no pressure that you know it, it's able to to just do amazing things. Garnet is a is a mineral that they found uh, in, in like in Connecticut, and it can endure all kinds of temperature, and all kinds of uh, really through centuries uh, of being able to even come up through rock bed. Um, the story, you know, it's, it's really it's a hard red mineral. It's called garnet, and, and its history is really surprising. According to uh, Yale Alumni Magazine, this gray rock formation in the hills of northern Connecticut. So looking at it today, you would not know that it was once buried 100 miles below the Earth's surface. So how did it get there? Well, a long time ago, a piece of the seabed was pushed deep under the land that is now the North American continent. Way below the surface where the earthquakes origin and, uh, originate and mountains are born, this particular rock was created as the Appalachian Mountains were being formed. And slowly, over time, it made its way back to the surface. And someone said it's so unusual to have rocks that return from that depth. Duncan Keller said this vertical height that these rocks travel was about 23 times the height from sea level to the top of Mount Everest. He's a genealogy professor who discovered garnet in the Connecticut rock. And he said this mineral can tell us the story of a rock because it preserves important information about its depth and temperature. Garnets are like snapshots really of, of rock, it's sort of like tree rings. You can say, see a lot of things in it. And they call it garnet rocks. And so today I think of a garnet God who is really what the writer said in verse 1, in you, O Lord, I take refuge. The writer may have been getting older and become, became ill and all kinds of things and suffering maybe from mistreatment, because in verse 4 he says, unjust and cruel people. Save me from unjust and cruel people. Anybody ever have to deal with unjust and cruel people? Well, this writer did. Whatever the circumstances, he has a personal relationship with God, and he addresses the Lord directly. He says, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. And he said in verse 2, incline your ear to me and save me. He's not afraid to ask for help. And he knows that he can't overcome the troubles alone. You see, the beginning of healing is learning ask, how to ask for help. Whether your healing is, a, whether it's an addiction or whether it's a problem you're going through, whatever it is, is learning to ask for help. And the writer says, deliver me and rescue me. And he's asking God to be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. A rock of refuge. God is our rock of refuge, if we think about it. Uh, thinking about just taking time to realize that there is something much bigger out there than you and I, this great rock of refuge. At Saddleback Church in California, where uh, Rick Warren's a pastor, he encourages people in this massive church to get into small groups and form into small groups and to connect because in such large churches you can kind of lose your identity. And uh, he's got a, uh, a study that really helps with, uh, among other things, addiction called Life's Healing Choices. And he said this, God wired us in such a way that we only get well in community. You know he's right. God made us that way. And God has made us to, to be people who get well. We need each other. We grow stronger together. We're not made to be an island and we get better in community. We get stronger in community. That's why the writer of Hebrews so strongly said, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as you see the day approaching, but even more so as you see the day approaching. 
do not accept, forsake the assembling of ourselves together because we need in times of testing, in times of persecution. And, and you know, it's, it, it was a really tough thing because when the church during the early parts of the pandemic, when we needed to be together more than ever, we weren't able to be together. And even though some of us were able to do online stuff, it just isn't the same, is it? It's not quite the same. So we need that rock, that stability. We need to trust in a God who's able to, to deliver us because nothing else. On Christ the solid rock I stand, no, no other ground, all other ground is sinking sand. And all other things will fade away. And we need to trust in the rock that is higher than us. This is something that, you know, in this world, in this world today when there's so much out there and, and you know, so many uh, confusing uh, things coming at us, so many political and so much division, it's wonderful to be able to have something stable today. And I promise you that this rock, this Jesus that I'm talking about, will not let you down if you trust Him. People will let you down. Friends will desert you. Family will move away and things will happen, but God will never let you down. And you can trust in Him. And many times I've called on Him in the midnight hour when there's nobody else around. God has always heard my prayer, and He always will. Like that song, the Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. No matter what ills be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Sing it. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. When this world begins to dissolve, just know this. God is still God. God is still on the throne. And the rock that I'm talking about, that garnet rock God, will never change. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm going to ask the musicians to come this morning. The invitation is always open for anyone who would like to come and pray. And we have people who listen to us, or watch us on, uh, by way of Facebook or uh, YouTube and those things. And we don't have any way of knowing what God is doing in your life unless you tell us. But I want you to know that if you trust in Christ, that He would never turn you away. He said, if, a, if you ask, He promised He'd deliver. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Let's sing. Let's stand as we sing number 361, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Let's do verses 1, 3, and 4.
Here the benediction is the acolyte saying, Go out among the outcasts and the grieving and speak the words of life and hope. And may the God who brings life into creation be your delight. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Let's sing the first verse of number 664, sent forth by God's blessing. Stay there. 